Hi friends! Welcome to back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amanda and one of my favorite things to do on this channel is answer your craft business questions. I've been doing craft shows and selling crafts for over 20 years and I get a lot of questions about how I started my business, how I run my business, all of the business related things and it's one of the things I love to share with you guys. So if you're new, be sure to hit subscribe for more of these kind of videos. There are a lot of places to sell your crafts. If you're making homemade things, you can sell them on Etsy. You can do craft shows. You can sell them on like Facebook Marketplace. You can sell them to friends and families, all different kinds of places to sell them. But the one we're talking about today is the craft show. I started doing craft shows when I was 15 years old. I've been doing them for over 20 years and um, we were raising money for our high school band to go to Washington DC to play and that's how one of the ways that we raised money is by doing craft shows. After the trip was over we just my parents and I just continued it and it just grew and grew and grew and we just continued to do them. Over the last 20 years I have had some unbelievable success and I've had some epic failures. There are a lot of things to consider when uh, preparing for your very first craft show and so today I want to talk to you about some of the things you can do to prepare and are they worth it? Uh, what do you need to know to make that decision of whether or not doing a craft show is right for you? I've done some shows that I've made really, really good and I have done some shows that I literally made zero and so I want to talk to you about that today and about you know preparing for that. I've got a cheat sheet here, so we're going to be doing some math, but don't worry if these numbers aren't what you're looking to make or looking to spend, just you can adjust them down or up, just, you know, just to fit you. I just want to give you a real life example of the cost and what goes into um, setting up for a craft show. Because I get asked this all the time, is it, is it worth it? And, and it's so hard to answer yes or no because it can be. It can be such a great experience. You can make um, a lot of money. You can meet a lot of um, fellow vendors that you guys can bounce ideas off of and like share. You know, I love sharing with other vendors. Um, I cannot tell you how many times we have traded wares. You know, if I have a Yardsy or something that I make and um, the stand next to me has homemade soap, I have traded for things like that. There are a lot of things to consider and I'll talk more about that kind of thing in some upcoming videos but I want to talk to you about what you can expect to pay and what you can expect to make again guys these are just estimates and every area is going to be different these are some kind of um, prices in my area but in your area a craft show may be a lot more expensive or it may be a lot cheaper we have a wide range of um, craft shows in our area we have some small like um, seasonal shows, fall shows and Christmas shows around here that are around $20, but then we have some larger trade shows that are several hundred. The smaller ones you're not going to spend as much, but you're not going to make as much either. So, you know, it, it's just a give and take. So one of my favorite ones in the area cost a little over $100 for easy math because, right, I'm just going to talk, uh, talk about like spending $100. So we'll say your entry fee is $100. Now, my kind of rule that I kind of go by, my goal is if I spend $100, I want to make $1,000. So whatever I spend on my booth rental fee, I want that to be around 10% of what I my overall um the overall amount I make it. So for example, if I have a $20 show, then it's going to be a lot smaller show. I expect it to be a lot smaller show and I expect to make a couple hundred dollars. Does that mean that I haven't made a thousand dollars at a $20 show? No, I have made a thousand dollars at a $20 show. I have also not made a hundred dollars at my hundred dollar show. So you never know, like, you know, but you will get, you will get used to knowing the different shows or the different types of shows and knowing the types that shows that your product goes well in. So again, looking at numbers, and I know that these numbers are going to go pretty fast since I've got them all written down, but you can take notes or go back and watch it back and forth a little bit, or you can just adjust it to whatever um, size show you're going to be doing. So if, for example, instead of a $100 show, a common uh, booth rental fee around here is around $50 for, you know, one of the smaller fall festival type shows, usually it's around $50. We do have several in our area that are 100 but uh, you can get into some shows for around 50 around here. So if you're going to do a $50 show, $50 show then you're just going to divide it in half. You, you get it. You get it. So again, 
if I want to make, a, you know, if I'm going to do a $100 craft show, that's my entry fee, I want to have $1,000 in sales. That's my goal, right? So let's say that my items are um, an average of $20, okay? So I have some uh, products that are much higher than $20. So I have some things that are um, less expensive than that. So again, maybe you only have one type of item, so all of your items are priced exactly the same. So that kind of thing, right? But let's just say, again, for easy math's sake and to not confuse you guys, we're gonna say that our items that we're selling at this particular craft show cost $20. Now, the way that I price my items is a third. So for example, if I make an item and it costs me $5, I want to sell it for 15. If it's an item that's $20, it's like $6.66, I don't know, lots of sixes, of, you know, we're going to round that, right? <laughs> it's going to be like six, to, say it's six fifty that you, um, uh, that you have in your product. And so I always, again, try to make, if, I, if it's something costs me $2, you know, yeah, I sell for six, you know, that kind of thing. Now, are there products that I make a lot more money on? Yes, I sell some customized Dollar Tree things that I only have a dollar in for $10. Some of my glass etched mugs, I sell those for $10 they only cost me a dollar. I also have some things that I don't quite make three times. So again, this is average. I'm all for you looking in your area and seeing how much something goes, you know, and just price accordingly. I'll try to do a whole nother video on pricing and things like that, but for now, we'll stick with that. So we're gonna say that you again, we're going to go back over $100 entry fee. We Our goal is $1,000 uh, um, sales, not profit, sales to make. We're, we're selling things that are an average of $20 per item. So we need to sell 50 items, right? So if we made, sold 50 items at $20 a piece, that would give our $1,000 sale, right? Again, if you sell things that are more expensive, you can sell less. If you sell things that are only a few dollars, you're definitely going to need to sell a lot more. Makes sense? Now also being said, you're not going to completely sell out. So let me say this again, you're probably not going to sell out. Now, in 21 years of doing craft shows, have I ever sold, sold completely sold out? Yeah, two or three times in 21 years, right? So the idea is at every time that I have sold out, I wish I had brought more things because there was still time left. That means I can make more money, right? So the idea is that you're not going to just need 50 items. You're going to need 150 items, right? Because you're going to, you know, I don't know. I usually go by sales, but, and it depends on the item. You know, if I'm bringing big furniture, of course, I'm not going to, you know, have that many, but I'm also going to be selling it for more money, you know? But for this experience, again, to try to make things as simple and easy on everyone, right, is we're going to say that we're probably going to sell a third of what we bring, which is really average. If I bring, you know, 10 of something, I'll usually sell three or four, you know, that kind of thing, right? So that means we don't only need 50 items, we need 150 items. Now, I'm going to make another video again on all of this because there's a lot of, you know, things to talk about when it comes to craft shows and business, but it's really just to quickly point out, it's really important that you actually have things for your um, uh, for your uh, customers to purchase in hand that day. I'm not saying that they won't make um, they won't uh, make a custom order, but you're going to sell a lot more if you, they have something that they can you know take home with them that day. You know, it's always a good idea to take custom orders, but most of the time they're going to want to be able to pay for something and bring it home. So you're going to need those cash and carry items. So I've seen a lot of people make a mistake if they did, you know, a display of all of these customized items that they can make, but they didn't have anything that people could take home with them. Now that kind of thing, again, I'll do another video, that kind of thing goes over real well if you're doing some kind of trade show where people aren't expected to actually pay for things. They're just looking for, you know, businesses to do business with and things like that. That's a whole different story, whole different video, whole different line of business. I'll do one of those later. So back to math, right? So now we need 150 items if we expect to sell 50 to make our $1,000, right? And they're an average price of $20, right? So you divide that by three and we rounded that to $6.50, right? So now we're going to need 150 of those, okay? So that 
total is 975. Let me go back over that just in case it sounded really confusing. You're gonna have 150 items that cost you around $6.50 to make. So that means that the amount of money you have in product is $975, around $1,000. Now, again, we said we were expected to make $1,000 at this show, but if you look, we actually have $3,000 worth of inventory. That is sell price, that is. So you have your $100 entry fee into the show. You have around $975 worth of actual product. It, we're, that's how much you have into the product. You say you spend around $20 in gas. Maybe it's a little further and you have a little bit more. Maybe it's close, you have a little bit less. But just in average, say you spend $20 on just fuel to get there. Say you forget your lunch. You should never forget your lunch, by the way. If you're going to a craft show, pack a lunch because you never know when you're not going to get to leave your booth. You don't want to leave your booth. You're there to sell product, right? So say you have to spend $20 or you just spend randomly $20, right? So you're looking at $1,100, you know, uh, $1,115 to be exact, you know. So you're looking at $1,100 out of pocket for your first show and you're hoping to, to make a thousand. Now that might sound like um, you didn't make any money. Now again, let me back up. You actually have $3,000 worth of product. So you have another couple thousand dollars worth of product that you can sell or that you keep in your um, in, in, you know, in your boxes and things for your next show. So you build on that. But we're just talking about if you are doing your very first show the upfront cost and all of that to get started. Again, you may make more, but you might not. And that's the point that I want to make is that your first show is going to be really hard to make money. And some of the things that I didn't list on some of the things that you might need, and I'll try to do a, um, a separate, but again, I have lots of these videos coming, right? Um, of some of the equipment, but you may need tables, you may need chairs, you may need tablecloths, you might need a canopy. Some shows provide these kind of things and some shows don't. So that might be worked into your initial cost of doing a craft show. So you might be thinking, this doesn't make any money the, or this this isn't worth it and you know what for your first one it might not and that's my point that's my point is i don't want you guys to i want you to be successful and i want to encourage you and i want you to do these but i want you to understand that your first couple craft shows you're probably not going to make any money or at least not any profit wise and that's okay the idea is that you that you're building so should you do a craft show you shouldn't do a craft show just you should sell on other platforms until you have enough money saved up in your business to be able to um, to to create a craft show inventory. You have to be okay with the fact that you're going to have, you know, $975 or again, maybe this is a $50 show and you only have $500 worth of things, you know, something like that. But you have to understand that you're going to have several hundred dollars in, in products that you're going to need because you need something for them to buy. Now, if we were math nerds and we wanted to do the do the continue to do the math, you know, you're out eleven hundred dollars, but you've made, but you've basically broke even the first time. You spend another hundred dollars, but you make two thousand. You you know, the 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 numbers eventually make sense to where you're making good money doing craft shows. I know that a lot of this can be confusing. I know that it's a lot of numbers. I know that it's a lot of thinking, but what I really, really want you to get out of this video is that craft shows can make a good amount of money, but they are a little risky. Do your research on your craft show. See if there's a lot of um, people selling similar things. You don't might not want somebody, you know, a lot of people selling the exact same thing, of course, but similar items to what you're selling and see how they've done. Maybe reach out and things like that. And don't be afraid afraid to do them, it's always a good idea to go and visit some of these craft shows before you do it for the first time. Just know for your very first craft show, you're going to have to build that inventory and you're going to have to be okay with the fact that there is a possibility that you will go, you will spend all of this money and you may not sell anything. Now that is worst case scenario and very, very few times have I just absolutely sold nothing. There have been several times that I have not made booth rent, you know, or something happens. For example, um, last year I did an outdoor show. Um, it was an outdoor fall festival show. The first day was, it was a, um, 
two to three day event, I want to say. I think I think it was a two day event. And um, the first day we did okay, but the next day would have been, you know, just as well or made like, you know, the first day you kind of break even, the second day is all your profit, you know, kind of thing. There was a large storm that came through, took out a lot of the canopies. It was a mess. There were things broken. Um, we didn't lose anything, thankfully, but I know a lot of people who did. And, you know, basically the show was a bust after that. So that's one of the things if it's an outdoor show or maybe it's a Christmas show and there's a possibility of winter. We've done several Christmas shows that we got there and the weather turned bad and just nobody came. So you just don't want to count on that money. That being said, I have done some shows that were surprisingly out of crazy. I, I got into one one time that I got in last minute had never done the show they called me that i had uh, i had applied really late i didn't get in they had a cancellation i threw everything i could possibly you know just leftovers from all of my other craft shows ended up making a thousand dollars and i didn't actually spend anything for that one of course i had had the um the money spent in previous um craft shows you know building up supplies but in that one it was just all profit, right? But a big part of my channel is using crafts to build a business and get out of debt. That's what we did to get out of debt and that's what I want you guys to be able to do or to make extra money for your family if you're already out of debt, that kind of thing. So I want to encourage you, but I also just want you to caution you so you know what you're getting into. I feel like it, I have an obligation to caution you. Now, again, once that is said, if when you're at a place where you can say, okay, I can afford to have, you know, $300 worth of inventory or $400 worth of inventory just ready to cash and carry sell. And again, you can continue to sell those, you know, on your on your other platforms. You know, it's always good to have a few items on hand, right? You know, but until you're to that place where you're like, okay, I've made a little bit of money. I can have these and it's okay if it doesn't sell. Then you're like, okay, and I can do this. And that is really when you will start making a lot of money. Hopefully this video has been encouraging for you. I know that initially it sounds really overwhelming and there's a lot of like, oh my gosh, these really high expensive numbers, but just know that, and they are fun guys. It is one of my favorite things. I absolutely love craft shows. You become like family to your other vendors. Some of my other um, vendor friends are watching. Hey guys, you know, and so um, you just, you do, you become family and it's like seeing each other, like, you know, especially when the springtime where you don't have a lot of those shows and, and everybody is this time of year is building up their inventories. That's why I thought it would be a good time to do this kind of video is some of you that are thinking about doing, especially spring and summer, there's not as many shows but come fall and Christmas time there's a lot of them sometimes we're doing back-to-back -back shows so anyway now is a good time to start building up that inventory and again it's not always a bad idea to have a few things you know on hand you just don't want to be stuck with a lot of things you're not going to sell so make sure you know by starting small and starting to sell a few things here and there um, online or with friends and family or, or Facebook or something like that that's going to give you a good idea of what might sell at a show. If you're having good success there, you're probably going to have pretty good success at a show. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for walk, watching. Um, uh, be sure to hit like and subscribe. My battery is almost dead, so I have to end this video quickly. But again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check back for some of those videos coming back because I have a lot of craft busy, uh, videos coming for you guys. I can't wait to see you. Bye.